Hi, I'm Rob D. I'm here with Rob B. We're from Property Hub and this is the Property Hub University course. And in this exciting course, we're going to teach you how property will make you rich in the long term, at least if you follow this advice. You're going to learn why property has historically gone up in value. You're going to learn the two magic ingredients for creating property wealth. You're going to learn how to make 400% more by using one powerful tool. You're also going to learn how to make an extra £107,241, seriously, over five years with one piece of knowledge. You're going to learn the four things you can do to get far above average results. And importantly, you're going to learn how taking even moderate action now can pay off massively in 10 years. There are some big claims in there, I know there are, but by the end of this course, I'm sure you'll agree that we've delivered on them. So let's jump straight in and let's give you the two magic ingredients for property wealth. The first one is inflation and the second is leverage. Put those two together and you've got the recipe for long-term wealth creation before you even do anything clever. Yeah, you hear a lot of claims made about what you can do in property in the short term. And maybe you can, but property fundamentally is set up to allow you to achieve incredible things in the long term as a result of these two forces. So let's get into what each of those two things is and then we'll put them together and show how they interact. So let's start with inflation. You'll have an idea of what inflation is, but the official definition is it's a persistent substantial rise in the general level of prices related to an increase in the volume of money and resulting in the loss of value of currency. In other words, more money gets created, that money goes into the economy, and that devalues the currency, which has the effect of pushing the price of everything up. So inflation is the reason why everyday goods seem to get more expensive over time. And this can really add up. So to buy something that would have cost you £100 in 1990 would cost you £237 today. Now, that doesn't mean that that product has got more expensive to produce or anything like that. That's purely because of inflation. Everything's gone up by that amount. Now, the government likes mild inflation. The government creates it and it does it on purpose because the opposite, which is deflation, is very damaging to the economy. For that reason, they aim to have inflation. They're not trying to keep prices stable. They aim to have inflation of 2% per year and they manipulate various variables to try to achieve that because if they tried to have zero, they could easily go the wrong way and have deflation, which would be very harmful. So instead, they aim for 2% a year. And as we've just seen, over time, that really adds up. And as well as trying to avoid deflation, there's another reason the government likes inflation as well, which we'll get to later in the course. But the thing you have to understand with inflation is it's here to stay. It's a fact of life. Inflation will happen whether you like it or not. And here's the thing. People are punished by inflation, but some are rewarded as well. Now, if you save, unfortunately, inflation will hurt you. Because if you are getting 2% savings return each year, which in this market isn't too bad, but inflation is running at 2%, well, you're not actually making anything. So savers are really hurt by inflation. But investors using debt can be rewarded by inflation and rewarded in a big way. And we'll explain why in a few moments time. So we said that inflation is a fact of life. And here's the proof. You can see here the inflation rate over time. And you can see that it hasn't gone negative. So there hasn't been deflation. That's prices getting lower since the 1930s. So what that means is that every year you're stacking inflation on top of inflation. So what that means is that with every passing year, a pound will buy you less. Sometimes inflation is higher. So there's a big spike in the 70s and the early 80s, but it's always there. So you're always getting either punished or getting rewarded. And the way to get rewarded is to combine inflation with the second magic ingredient behind property investing, and that is leverage. Leverage in investment terms is using credit or other people's money to buy more assets. So let's use a very simple example. If you had £100,000, you could buy one property cash for 100000 So your portfolio value is £100,000. Alternatively, you could leverage by using mortgages, so credit, to increase the amount of properties you purchase. So you could take that 100 k and split it into four 25k deposits and go and buy four properties, each worth 100k. So with mortgages, you're now controlling an asset worth 400k instead of 100k. And we'll see in a minute why combining this with inflation can be really powerful. But first, we need to get really clear about the type of debt that we're talking about. People get very scared around the word 
debt because it's got negative connotations and it can be a very negative thing. But you can use debt intelligently by investing in the right thing. So an intelligent use of debt involves investing in an asset that goes up at least as fast as inflation and ideally produces an income for you as well. So using a mortgage to buy a property clearly meets these tests. Property, as we'll see later, tends to go up at least as fast as inflation, and it produces an income for you in the term of rent. So that's why we refer to a mortgage as good debt. But take an example of the opposite case. Say that you borrowed the same amount of money to buy a car instead. Well, that would be bad debt because the value of a car goes down in value over time and it produces no income. So after you've sold that asset, you'd make a loss and you wouldn't be able to pay your debt back. So debt can be a very, very bad thing, but it can also, in the right context, be an extremely powerful thing. Very powerful indeed. The power of inflation and leverage working together can really transform your wealth. Let's look at how that could play out. So using the same example as before, we could take 100k and buy one property cash. Or we could take that 100k and split it into four deposits and buy four properties, each worth 100k. Of course, we'll have mortgages on each of those properties. Now, at some point, the market will go up by 20%. We don't need to debate on when that will happen, but at some point, we know it will. So when the market is up by 20%, your property you purchase with cash is now worth 120k. Fantastic. You've made 20k in capital gains. Well done. And... Let's not forget you've earned some rental income along the way too. But if you'd leveraged and you have purchased four properties each worth 100k, then your four properties are now worth 120k each. In total, your portfolio has gained 80k in capital value, which is a staggering difference of 400%. So by using leverage, you can really accelerate your wealth creation. And this is where it's really important to understand that debt is really your friend if you're a sensible investor. Because you have taken out debt to have that increase that we've just talked about to get that 400% return. But what's really interesting is that you've taken out debt to accelerate that wealth creation. But at the same time, your debt in real terms is eroding away because of inflation. Whatever your debt level is today, Your debt in real terms is eroding. So even if the number is the same number, what it's worth is a lot less. For example, 20 years ago, £30,000 probably got you a Porsche. Today, £30,000 gets you a Ford. It's the same amount of money, but today it's worth a lot less. And your debt in 20 years' time will be worth a lot less as well. So these two forces combined are working in your favour to create long-term wealth that many other assets would struggle to compete with. Powerful stuff. And that's just inflation in general. Next, we're going to look at why property historically has risen faster than inflation. Click the link in the description to continue this course on the Property Hub website, where you can save progress, take a quiz for each module, and work towards your Property Hub University qualification, all for free. So inflation as a force can either punish you as a saver or reward you as an investor. But property specifically tends to rise faster than the general rate of inflation. And now we're going to find out why that's the case. Now remember, even if that's not the case, even if your property just increases in price along with inflation, you win. It's going to be making you money for you every month in the form of rent. And it's going to be going up in value while your debt stays static. But like I said, historically, that's not the case. Property tends to go up faster than the general rate of inflation. Take a look at this graph. This shows you real house prices, which is another way of saying inflation adjusted house prices. So what it's showing you is what's happened to property prices since 1975 with inflation already taken into account. So this is showing you how much property has grown in addition to general inflation. Now, you can see that prices don't always go up compared to inflation. Sometimes they go down. And if you watch our course on the 18-year property cycle, you'll find out why that's the case and how to predict when that's going to happen. But if you take a long view and you look at the general trend, you'll find that even after taking inflation into account, property prices have not far off quadrupled since the late 1970s. So let's look at an example. The average house price in the year 2000 was £77,698. Yes, it's true. We are not making it up. 
Don't you wish we had a time machine? Today, the average is 215,000. Now, of that increase, 38%, 52,000, is due to general inflation. But 62%, a whopping £85,000 of it, is additional house price inflation. So you can see how strongly property performs against general inflation. So why does that happen? Why do house prices rise faster than inflation? Well, there's many reasons, but there's two main ones. The first is supply and demand. In the UK, we have a lot of people who want to own property, but not enough properties. We don't get close to building enough. Over a decade ago, the government was targeted to build 250,000 new homes every single year. And since then, how many times have we built 250,000 homes in a year? Not once. And in fact, in some years, we've fallen below half that number. So we were falling behind every single year. And these supply and demand pressures mean that property continues to rise faster than inflation. The second reason is credit. And the fact that banks like lending money against property. They see it as a generally a safe asset, as long as they don't let you over leverage. And then it allows them to make really good returns against an asset that's, well, safe as houses. As long as these conditions are in place, property will continue to rise faster than inflation. And the chances of that supply and demand issue being fixed and banks losing their appetite to lend money out, well, I'd say it's slim to none. But remember, even if you only keep pace with inflation, you still win. You get rent as well. Click the link in the description to continue this course on the Property Hub website, where you can save your progress, take a quiz for each module, and work towards your Property Hub university qualification. Using leverage to buy property is a really powerful thing. But of course, that leverage doesn't come for free. You're going to have to make interest payments on your debt. And you're going to have rent coming in to help you make those payments. So next, we're going to look at both of those points. Of course, just because leverage is powerful doesn't mean that you should borrow like crazy to buy anything at any price. And it doesn't mean that you should completely ignore how much the borrowing costs you. If you're not able to make the interest payments on your debt, you're in big trouble. And either you're going to be forced to sell your property or the lender will actually take it off you. That's why it's very important to be sensible. You don't want to be buying assets that are too expensive. You don't want to take on too much leverage. And importantly, you want to make sure that you only invest in assets where the income that you get more than covers your interest payment. Now, recently, interest rates have been extremely low. They've been extremely low for about a decade. And that means that investors, for the most part, have had an easy time of it. They can safely borrow large amounts of money and the payments on that debt will be pretty low. Therefore, the rent will more than cover it. But a lot of people get nervous about what happens when interest rates go up. When the interest rate goes up, that means that your payments get more expensive. And if your payments get more expensive and they're higher than the rent, then you're going to be having to put in your own money just to make the payments to stop the house getting taken off you. Luckily, while it's always important to be sensible, there are some safeguards in place. Lenders are now more aware of this than they used to be. So they've recently been forced to put protection in place. So they will only let you borrow money against a property if the income from that property will cover the interest payments not only now, with interest payments being as they are today, but also if they go up in the future. So at the moment, many lenders use 5.5% as an interest rate. So even if you're only paying, say, 3% interest on your debt, they'll say, OK, but if the interest rate goes up to 5.5%, will the rental income still more than cover that interest payment? If it does, great. If it doesn't, they won't let you borrow as much money. So in some ways, this is restrictive, but that's a good thing because it stops you getting carried away and over borrowing. There's a mechanism in place. Of course, if interest rates ended up getting out of control, and we saw from a graph earlier that interest rates in the 1970s were north of 12%, if that happens, then they will increase their test. So therefore, you're going to be able to borrow less. However, it's extremely unlikely that interest rates will get out of control anytime soon. And that's not just that we're getting lulled into a full sense of security because they've been low for 10 years. The Bank of England has said the same thing. They brought out an inflation report in the summer of 2018 that said that they don't think that the base rate will get above 3% in the long term. Now, the long term average going back over 100 years is around about 5%. But because of various factors, they don't think it's going to get above 3% in the long term. Now, of course, if the general interest rate in the economy goes up, then lenders will put their interest rates up as well, and they might increase that test, meaning that you can borrow less. But luckily, all indications are that interest rates are going to stay low for a while yet. 
Now, typically, in the past, lenders have looked to make around about 2% margin when they lend you money. Now, this can vary. In very competitive times, this will shrink right down. And in less competitive times, this margin will increase. But 2% is the average. So lenders stress testing your borrowing at 5.5% is probably a good long-term estimate. So even if you feel like getting carried away, the banks will stop you because they have sensible stress test levels. So what you're going to be using to make your interest payments is the rental income. And amazingly, we're all this way in and we haven't even mentioned rents yet. Rents don't get as much attention in the media or anywhere else because they're not that exciting. Rents have got very little relation to house prices. House prices will boom and house prices will slump, but rents will kind of chug along doing what they've always done. It makes sense when you think about it because rents are based on people's ability to pay that rent. Therefore, they generally rise and fall based on people's wages. And wages generally rise and fall roughly in line with inflation. What that means effectively is that rents are an inflation-linked income stream. So if you earn £500 in rent now, it's likely to still be the equivalent of £500 in 20 years. The actual number will be higher because of inflation, but in terms of buying power and earning power, it's going to equate to the same thing. You can see that really powerfully on this graph. This is a really amazing graph. So what you can see here is house price inflation, which is the red line, and this is going all over the place. So sometimes house prices are going up, sometimes they're going down. It's absolutely all over the place. The blue line, you barely even notice when you first look at this because it's basically just straight. And this is rental inflation. And what that shows is that whatever is happening to property price growth, rents are just carrying on growing at around about 2% a year. Why is that? Well, it's because they go up in line with wages, which go up in turn in line with inflation. And as we've already seen, the government tries to keep inflation at around about 2% a year. So the brilliant thing about rents as an income stream is that it's predictable. Whatever happens to house prices, rents are going to carry on pretty much as they always were. So to recap, let's look at what property gives you. First of all, it gives you an asset that rises faster than inflation, which you can buy with debt that stays static, and that debt devalues in real terms over time. And the second thing it gives you is an income stream that keeps pace with inflation. You can see how over 10, 20, or 30 years, this could make you rich. But it gets even better. And in the next part of this course, we're going to look at how you can get really rich with property. Click the link in the description to continue this course on the Property Hub website, where you can save your progress, take a quiz for each module, and work towards your Property Hub University qualification. Property, thanks to inflation and thanks to leverage, is set up to make you rich over the long term. But you can do better than that. In this video, we're going to show you four things that you can do to get really rich with property. The first of those is to get a good deal. One of the brilliant things about property is it's something that you can buy for less than it's genuinely worth. That doesn't mean that it's easy to do, but it can be done. Most other assets, like stocks and shares, you cannot do it. It's impossible. With property, it is possible. You can buy for less than it's genuinely worth. If you can do that, that gives you instant equity, even before general inflation or even before property inflation helps you out. This is a big topic and a really important one to know about. So go and check out our Property Hub University course on how to get a property deal to learn more. The next thing you should be doing is buying at the right point of the cycle. Now, prices don't go up at the same rate all the time. They go up aggressively. They go down sometimes aggressively. The difference between buying at the best time and the worst time can be the difference between doubling your money in a few years or being no better off after 10. Now, to really understand this subject and when the best times to buy in a property cycle, go and check out our course on the 18-year property cycle. It's part of Property Hub University. It's absolutely free and it's essential viewing. Because if you understand the property cycle, then you understand how to take advantage of it. And if you understand how to take advantage of it, well, you can be rich. The third thing that you can do to get really rich in property is not just buy at the right time, but also buy in the right place. Here's a really important point. So far, the whole way through this course, we've only talked about averages. Everything that we've said has been an average. But as a smart, educated investor, you can do a lot better than average. So, for example, at the time that we're recording this, the average growth in UK cities over the last 12 months is 4.6%. This will have changed at least somewhat by the time you're watching this, but the point is about the variation that an average can conceal. So, the average over the last 12 months is 4.6%. However, in London, it's 0.7%, and in Manchester, it's 
So depending on where you invest, you could outperform or underperform by a long way. If you'd invested in Manchester over the last 12 months, you would have outperformed the average by 2.8%. If you'd invested in London over the last 12 months, you would have underperformed by 3.9%. Now, again, that doesn't mean that you should definitely invest in Manchester now, or you definitely shouldn't invest in London now. It may have changed. But the point is, at any time, there's always a big range. There are some areas doing better than others. Now, over the long term, you tend to get something called reversion to the mean. So over the long term, everything grows by roughly the same amount. The best area today will not be the best area in five or 10 years time. But if you buy in the right place at the right time, and you get just a few years of really strong growth, it can make a massive difference to your returns. So let's have a look how this could play out. You've got the average area versus the best area. So if we purchase the property worth 250,000 pounds and we purchased it in an average area, the growth on that property would be 4.6%. Now to purchase that property, if we're putting 25% down, we'd need 62,500 pounds. After five years at that growth rate, our property is now worth £313,038. So fantastic. It's grown by £63,038. Or it's given as a return on investment, ROI, of 101%. Fantastic. Or is it? Because if we'd invested in the strongest area, which is currently seeing 7.4% annual growth, what would the difference be? Well, if we purchased for 250000 again, we put down the same deposit, 62,500. After five years, our property would be worth 357,241 pounds, or a growth of over 100,000 pounds, 107,241. That's just in five years. That's an ROI of 171%. The difference in that ROI is an incredible 70%. So the difference between picking the best areas and just being average is fast. And that's why it's so important you target the best areas when you invest. Now, there's one more thing you can do, and that is combining leverage with more leverage by remortgaging to buy more. So far, we've just looked at using leverage once and then nothing else ever again. But if the amount of equity in your properties increases, either because you bought it at a discount like we talked about, or because of property price inflation, that means you can then remortgage at that higher amount to release cash. Then you can put that cash back in to grow your portfolio. So let's look at a quick example of a single property. Then we can see how this would work if you apply it to your whole portfolio over time. So let's say that you managed to buy a property for £135,000 that's really worth £150,000. So you've got yourself a 10% discount by buying well. Then over time, you'd expect the value of that property to go up. So let's say that after three years, it's increased in value by 15%. So it's now worth £172,000. So you bought it for 135, pounds It's now worth 172. pounds What you can then do is remortgage to 75% of that 172000 that new amount. By the time you've done that and you've repaid your original loan, you're going to have money left over. In fact, you're going to have £27,750 in cash left over. That's nearly enough for a deposit on a whole new property. So just by buying well and having that property price inflation that we've talked about, you can then use leverage again to pretty much buy another property without having to put in any of your own money. So that's just one simple example over a short period of time. When you apply the same principle to your whole portfolio over a long period of time, the difference is pretty amazing. It certainly is. So let's take a look. So first of all, let's start with out remortgaging. So We invest £80,000 today and we buy two properties worth £320,000 in total because we use mortgages. Now, let's say we never buy anything again, but we benefit from 5% capital growth each year. Now, after 10 years, your portfolio would be worth £547,000 with equity of £307,000. Very nice indeed. But what would happen if we remortgage during this time period. Well, let's say we invest that £80,000 again. We buy two properties worth 320000 We never buy anything again, and we also benefit from 5% capital growth each and every year. And after five years, we remortgage using some of our available equity, the rental profit we've made, and no more of your own cash is needed. We're just going to use what's within our property portfolio. So in total, this would be £66,000 in equity and £20,000 in rental income. 
So if you use most of that to reinvest, and remember, not putting any more of our own money in, after 10 years, your portfolio would be worth £976,000, with equity of £416,000. In these two scenarios, it's important to remember that you've both started off with 80000 You haven't put any more of your own money in during this process. But the difference in equity that you make during this period is over £100,000. So the compounding advantage of remortgaging, again, is huge. What's incredible about what we've taught you in this course is that if you implemented just one of these strategies, then your wealth would be significantly increased. But by combining them all and putting them all together and following these principles as a way of investing, your wealth creation over time should be staggering. So let's wrap this up. Can you get rich from property in the short term, in a short amount of time? Well, yeah, you can, but you'll need a lot of cash to invest in order to do that. And it's going to take you a lot of effort and a little bit of luck as well. What about over the long term? Can you get rich from property in the long term? Yes, absolutely, you can. And you can do so, as we've showed you, without even needing to do anything that clever, because the forces of inflation and leverage will do all the hard work for you. That is the magic of time. Property is such an amazing investment because basic economic principles do most of the work for you. But you don't have to settle for just being rich. You can be really rich. You can do more. If you buy in the right place, you buy at the right time, you get a good deal when you buy, and you then take advantage of those three things by remortgaging when you can to buy more, then you can get really rich with property in the long term. Now, if you'd like help and guidance in implementing this strategy, then you may want to check out Property Hub Invest as we help our clients invest by using these very principles. But whether you decide to go alone or work with some experts, if you follow these principles that we've laid out for you, you'll be a far more successful investor. So good luck. Click the link in the description to review all parts of this course on the Property Hub website, where you can save your progress, take a quiz for each module, and work towards your Property Hub University qualification. All for free.